Welcome students. The goal of this video is to learn in Tinkercad how we can make our own keychain. So when I say Tinkercad, I mean the uh, three-dimensional computer design program that we can then use uh, to make our own uh, designs, which we can then 3D print. Okay, so we're going to be making a keychain. I've got some examples here, but I'm actually going to give you some specifications that your design must follow. Uh, it needs to be a certain size and we need to add some other features to make sure that our keychain uh, is going to work properly. So because we're 3D printing this and because a keychain usually fits into your pocket or your bag, we don't want it to be too big. So the first specification is it must fit within a 35 by 35 millimeter times eight millimeter rectangular prism. And I'll go through that in a minute, but if we follow that size, we know it won't be too big. It also must include one letter. So that might be the letter of your name or, or if this is to be a present for someone. And it must include a five millimeter hole. So you can see this example has the hole there. You can see these examples have holes here and there. So if we keep that at five millimeters, we will then be able to thread our chain or our key ring through that. Okay, let's talk more about the rectangular prism. So here we go. Here is the size your key chain must fit in. So it must fit within this box or rectangular prism. So it's 35 millimeters one way, 35 millimeters the other way, and eight millimeters high. Now this isn't a cube. If that was 35 millimeters, this would be a cube because it's uh, shorter than, a, than these even sides. It's a rectangular prism. Now that's a box shape, but your design doesn't have to be that box shape. So yes, this one here is fitting directly into those measurements, but you can see the triangle, it's 35 millimeters this way and 35 millimeters this way. So that's fine. It fits within that box. And same with the circle, it's 35 millimeters through the diameter. And, uh, and that will fit within the size. Now, all three of these designs would be eight millimeters high as well. Okay, now that we've gone over the specifications, let's get into Tinkercad. Okay, students, we're in Tinkercad now, and I'll just go over a few of the basic features before we make one of the um, keychains. So then you can then follow that to do your own design. Uh, the grid-like area is the work plane. That's where we're going to be doing all of our designs. We have uh, this little box up here will help you um, in your views. Very important that we learn, learn that. And these are our basic shapes. And that's what these basic shapes is what we use to uh, build our design. And they can be used to either create a shape like that. Um, we can put multiple shapes in and up here we can group them and then we can also subtract shapes from them. So if I get this whole feature and I group that again is the group feature, you can see that we're starting to build up our shape. So you can see for this one here, I may have built this cylinder here and then, but you can see I've subtracted some material from the inside. So I'm gonna start by building this rectangular keychain here. So we're gonna start off with the basic shape, which was the box. So I'm gonna drag that out onto the work plane. It's gonna change the color. But you can see that the shape, the size, the dimensions of this box is different than the dimensions of this box. So the first thing we need to do is get our dimensions correct. So remembering that we need to, I've just clicked the white box there and we need to change it to 35 by 35 millimeters. Okay, getting closer, but still the height was wrong. So remember, we want our keychain to be only eight millimeters high. It needs to fit in your pocket. So I've clicked the, the one for the height, I've clicked in the box to change the dimension. And I'm just gonna change that to eight and hit enter. Great, so you can see within about a minute, I've already got that basic shape. So just like before, when I was showing you how to subtract shapes from one another, I need to subtract that inside shape there. 
Now I could bring out another box and get it to the right size, but I've already done all the hard work here. So I'm just going to hit the duplicate button and that should give me two of them there. Now remember we're subtracting. So up here in the shape panel, I can then turn that second box into a hole. But it's still the same size as the first one. So even though I've duplicated it, I can still change the size on the second one. And if that was 35, I might change the hole to 30 each way. So 30 millimeters there, 30 millimeters there. Okay, if I just go to the top view, remember to always use your viewing box, it's very handy. And I might just, I'm just using my arrow keys and I'll get that into the center. There we go. Okay, so that's probably ready to subtract. So I'm just gonna draw a box over the whole lot to select both of them. And again, hit the group. Now what's different here? This is subtracted right through, where you can see this one over here only went halfway through. So select that again, and this time I wanna go back and fix it. So I'm gonna hit the ungroup. The problem is this second one box here is going all the way through. So I'm gonna hit the front view. Uh, just zoom in a bit. And you can see that black circle there. I'm just gonna lift him up till it's about halfway. Okay, now what's gonna happen now if I draw the square over both of them to select them both and hit group? Okay, now we're getting more like the example that we want. Now remember on your design, we also needed a letter and that's no problems because we've got a text feature here. So just drag this out and you can drag it anywhere. And I'm gonna put uh, E for example. Uh, I might change the font as well. And I'm gonna get that into the position that I want. Uh, now you can see this little feature here changes the angle. So I might try and be a bit fancy and do that. And this time I'm just, going to drag the squares out. I'm not too worried about what sizes they are because I just want it to fit within that 35 millimeter box. Okay, check all your views. Let's check the front view. Note we can see that the letter is a bit high. It's gonna be higher than that size that we needed. So I'll hit that one there saying 10. And remember, we only wanted eight. Okay, just one thing missing from this final design and that's a hole here. So remember, we needed the five millimeter hole because this is going to be a key chain. So we need to be able to put a key ring or, or thread, a, thread a chain through it. So I'm going to get my cylinder hole and drag it out. That's much too big. So again, we know what to do now. It's going to say five. And if you're doing a circle, remember to do a circular shape. Remember to do both sides. And I think about here would be a good spot just because it's not touching the letter. Um, and you can see that the hole, this cylinder is much higher than we need, but that's okay because it's a hole and it's going to subtract. We won't see that. So now we just need to do one final group. And there we go. We have our first uh, key ring to those specifications of uh, 35 millimeters high by 35 millimeters wide by eight millimeters high. So that's a very simple shape. You can try your own design. So you've got the triangular one here and the circular one here, but have a look at this one up here with the M. Do, do we think that meets all the dimensions? Well, as long as it fits within those sizes, it probably does. It has the letter, has the hole, and we know it's in the right shape. I'll just ungroup it to give you a bit of an idea of how I made it. So I have a cylinder, I have another cylinder hole, I have this shape on the outside that was made by two boxes, and we have our letter in the middle. Okay, now that we've finished the design of our key ring, it's important that you rename uh, the key ring up here. Uh, the, if you're uh, doing this in a class, um, the last thing your teacher wants is 20 or 25 different designs and they're all called key ring. So make sure that you, you can just click up there uh, and just put your name in there uh, and hit enter. And then when we save that file to 3D print, uh, the file will have your name in it, which will make it a lot easier uh, to recognize and to manage. 
Uh, and one final thing, we can't send this design straight to the 3D printer. It needs to be exported as a special file type called STL. So to do that, first of all, pick which design that you want to print and then select it. So I want to print that one there. And we have this export up here. And you can see when I hover over it, it says download for 3D printing. So I'm going to hit export, uh, the selected shape, yes. And there's the file type, STL. So I'll hit that. And that will save to, to your computer and you'll be able to give that to your teacher for 3D printing. Okay, so just an overview of the features that we use today. Uh, don't forget, this is your work plane. Uh, don't forget to use your viewing box there to move around the screen. We have the basic shapes. Uh, basic shapes can also be turned into holes, which when, when combined with solid shapes with the group, will subtract. Don't forget that you can uh, add text to your design. And we always need to resize the dimensions of our design to fit whatever criteria that we're designing to. Okay, so that's an overview of Tinkercad to design um, a keyring. Good luck with your design.